Okay, in this video, I'm going to land the standard delta glider. And I've created a scenario. This is actually pretty old, about a year ago. And it just has the delta glider in orbit shortly after taking off from Cape Canaveral. And I'll explain here when it loads up. So in this scenario, you can see that I've got a circular orbit around 237 kilometers. And at the moment I am about halfway around. This is the point that I saved it. It's not quite halfway around and I did that on purpose. That would give me a little bit more time. So let me select Cape Canaveral. So I'm 15, uh, 15 point seven eight, and you know, counting up, getting close to the halfway point. It reaches the halfway point when you're around 18.5 to 19.5, somewhere in that range. And that's when I will do the retrograde maneuver and then burn down the periapsis. So this takes a little while just due to the fact that you can't really do a lot of time acceleration when you're when you're landing when you're coming through the atmosphere the it's it's so sensitive it's such a delicate process that any amount of uh, time acceleration just kind of really messes things up but at least for now we're up in orbit and we can take care of some some of these maneuvers with time acceleration. So I'll just kind of walk through the basic process, at least this is kind of how I do it using the standard delta glider. And in my opinion, the standard delta glider, it just is a really, it's a really bad vessel for re-entry. Just that whole process, the deorbit re-entry landing, this is just not a good vessel for it because it just doesn't have the autopilots that you need but it's, it's possible. So I'm just going to accelerate time here. Uh, go out to 100x until I get to the halfway point. And I know I'm getting close. So let me go down to 10. And the, the easy way to know that you've reached the halfway point is this number will stop going up and it'll start going down. So I'm at 19.85 and I think because I've done this scenario a couple times, I think that's the point where it actually starts counting backwards. But that's basically what I look for, is just when the distance, yeah, it's counting backwards now. So now I know I'm halfway around the globe. So I'll go ahead and hit retrograde. And I'll use T just to speed that up. And this burn is quite small. It doesn't take much at all to get your periapsis down. And to do this, uh, the usual target that you're going for is about 40 kilometers. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll use a little bit of translation to get the rest of it. And it doesn't have to be exact, but I like nice round numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and get it exactly at 40.00. And then we can go back to the prograde position. Now at this point, my altitude is 236, 236 kilometers, so I'm still well up in, in space and I don't have to worry about atmospheric drag. So I can go ahead and accelerate time until I get to the point where the atmosphere starts to become an issue. The terminology for that is the entry interface. 
that's the altitude where you need to, uh, you know, button down the hatches, so to speak, and, you know, prepare for entry. And that altitude is approximately uh, 120 kilometers. That's the standard altitude for entry interface. In practice with Orbiter, you can probably go down to even 100 kilometers before you really have to worry about it. But if you want to follow more standard protocol, then you want to go to about 120 kilometers, and then you can start preparing your re-entry. So let me go ahead and accelerate time until my altitude is down to about 120 kilometers. And I hit 130, I'll back down to 10x so that I don't overshoot. And you'll notice if you do overshoot, by the way, that your periapsis altitude will immediately start going down because once you get below <clears throat> 120 ish kilometers than you are getting atmospheric drag. You can see it right there. Now I'm at 39.99. So I'm already starting to get a little bit of drag from the atmosphere. So basically I'm at entry interface now. Let me go to the prograde position just to get everything centered. Now if you were if you had the radiator extended which I don't in this scenario just because the standard delta glider doesn't actually make use of the radiator realistically um, or at least it, it doesn't actually accomplish anything to have it open so I generally ignore it but if you have it open then you want to close it at this point if you have retro doors open you want to close those you want to prepare for the atmosphere at this point so now I can go to you know, level out And I'll bring up arrow brake. Switch over to rotation. And what I'm going to do here, first of all, I'm just going to yaw myself out and get myself level. Okay. Now I'm going to use arrow brake to help me with my correct angle of attack for making sure that I making sure that I I guess I should say making sure I run out of energy when I reach Cape Canaveral. And the way to do that, the easiest way, <clears throat> click on the PG button that'll bring up this screen. And then PRJ, and you should be looking at something like this. Now I'm going to have to turn off the level horizon. And this part's a little awkward just because of the fact that the Delta Glider just again doesn't have good autopilot systems. <clears throat> so I'm going to use the angle of attack hold that Aero Brake has, and it's not very good. So I'm actually pitching down very slowly, very, very slow pitch. And you can see this here is closing in on Cape Canaveral. What I want to do is as soon as that's closed in I want to click this AOA button and have it hold the angle of attack for me and that's going to be when the angle of attack is approximately 1.8 and because of the sensitivity it's it's a little difficult to get it exact but I'll explain here what I'm doing as I'm doing it down a little more and right about yep, it's going the wrong direction yeah it's so sensitive so now I'm pitching up just a tad you can see this number is getting smaller at about 1.8 ish well, that's pretty close. 
So now I've got the angle of attack set where I want. And all I can do now is I've just got to ride this out. I'm at 96 kilometers. And what I kind of want to mention here is you're going to see this bounce all over the place. And that's because the standard delta glider doesn't have the ability to shift the center of gravity. And it doesn't have, and, and because the aero brake MFD AOA hold just doesn't hold very well. So this is going to bounce all over the place. What I really am more concerned about for now is this, my vertical speed. It's holding at 106, I should say negative 106, and then negative 105, and it's going to hold close to this number. It's going to continually go down, it'll get closer to zero, but it'll be very gradual. As long as this is steady, as long as this is holding, then I know that my descent into the atmosphere is relatively smooth, irrespective of however wonky this is getting. So as this bounces all over the place, I'm not going to worry about that because this is holding pretty steady. And there's nothing I can do for now except wait. You don't want to use time acceleration because that will make all of this go completely crazy. And this will stabilize in a little bit. It's just we're, in, we're reaching a point of the atmosphere where this is trying to do all kinds of compensation and it just because the programming I guess I would call it or I'm not actually sure what you would call it but basically this is just not a good autopilot that's that's all there is to it you can attempt to keep this a little more stable by hitting kill rotation every now and then and just you know kill let it go kill let it go and that'll help keep this from bouncing around so much but it really doesn't matter as long as this is holding that's more important for now we'll deal with this part of it a little bit later but again if you want to try to help baby it a little bit you can kinda of hit kill and let it go and if you can find the exact like sweet spot so to speak you can press kill rotation and just hold it or not not hold the button but down but just let it just let it stay down and that'll kinda of help keep this but right now that's not a good position for me to have the kill rotation in because it has this going way out but there's some things we can keep an eye on if we bring up map MFD can kinda take a look and see how this is coming along I also like to look at base sync shows me the distance to the base and my ground speed and you'll notice the ground speed will hold at a very high number basically until you're almost all the way to the base I mean you're gonna lose very very little velocity until you're almost on top of the base but then when you're when you're almost on top of the base you're gonna lose an incredible amount of velocity really fast and I can also see we using this MFD that my distance to the base is uh, basically right on that shows me that I'm 1.8 kilometers off but for all intents and purposes you're there anything within 20 or 30 kilometers and you're you're basically right at the base by the time you get to the base you don't actually want to be heading dead center toward the middle of it anyway because you got to land on the runway so it actually eventually I actually want to be quote unquote missing the base by you know even actually like 40 or 50 kilometers so that I can you know line up and land on the runway so for now I'm just enjoying the ride you can't really control anything 
any attempt to control anything at this point will just throw you wildly off course. Um, I don't make any adjustments to the heading, <clears throat> or rather to the pitch, I mean. If you unclick this at this point, it's going to send you around the whole planet. So don't try to adjust this after you've reached entry interface and have it set. Just leave it set. Even though this shows that I'm overshooting Cape Canaveral by a landslide, I'm just not even going to worry about that for now. I can make small corrections, well, which are actually large corrections, using the air brake. But I will do that a little later on once I'm closer. But yeah, if you un if you undo the AOA, you're you're gonna miss. You're gonna miss completely. There's there's virtually no way to undo it and then get it set again when you're this low in the atmosphere. It's it's basically impossible. You'll you'll burn up or you'll bounce back out into space. So just leave it set. No matter what's happening here, just leave it set. And while I'm cruising in, take a look at some of the different views. Can zoom out using page up. Still got a long way to go. And just I like to periodically look at everything. This is how far away I am from the base. This is my ground speed. You can also look at the flight data monitor if you have that module enabled. And that will show you the heat, which I think is interesting. Except it's looks like <clears throat> there it is. Free stream temperature, I think, is what I'm looking for. I believe the temperature starts to get, um, you don't really notice much temperature until you get into the, you know, around 51 kilometers. I believe that's when the things really start heating up. Now due to how much aero brake is showing that I'm going to miss Cape Canaveral by, I'm going to go ahead now that I'm getting close-ish to the base. I'm going to go ahead and extend the air brake a little bit. I kind of assume in real life this would actually destroy the vessel, but the air, the delta glider is pretty much impervious. You can see when I extend the air brake, it sends this all the way back here somewhere. So now I can close it, and you can see that's got me a little closer. And basically I will continue to play with the air brake to uh, try to dial this down. And that's why I don't mess with the AOA, I use the air brake instead. I just don't think that the air brake is terribly realistic because of the speed. Uh, in the atmosphere I just, I believe that and I could be wrong, but I, I just I think extending the air brake would actually just shred the vessel. Extend the air brake again. Give it a couple seconds. Close it back up. 
you can see each time I do that it gets this a little closer to the center and the closer I get to the base the more I'm going to be the more I'll be concerned about having this right on the money close the air brake again basically each time I close the air or open the air brake you'll see that my velocity reduces more quickly like right now it's coming down at maybe one tick per second but when I extend the air brake it's giving me like two or three clicks a second and you can also see that if you leave the air brake open too long you'll come up short uh, big time you could end up landing in you know Texas instead of Florida so you gotta be very careful not to leave the air brake open too long but otherwise all this is pretty automated I'm not controlling anything manually other than the air brake and it's not because I don't want to it's just because you can't the the velocity is just way too extreme you can't control uh, the vessel with human input it's just it's completely impossible see the ground speed distance to the base I guess this doesn't show the temperature I thought it did oh duh I guess you have to hit start air brake close the air brake More air brake. Close the air brake. See the distance is getting uh, pretty. Once it drops below 1.5, I kind of feel like that's really close because this velocity just has you there so quickly at that point. If anybody knows a better way to land the standard delta glider, I'm all ears, because I don't know. I've used the attitude in FD, but it only has pitch. It doesn't have AOA, so I find it completely useless. If I'm understanding this correctly, <clears throat> it looks like peak heating is passed and we're cooling off now.
close this out. You see the distance is really coming down, but so is the velocity. <clears throat> Still working the air brake, trying to dial this in. Thing I want to do now to bring up glide slope. Start thinking about my lineup with the runway. Almost there.
Oops. <clears throat> Turn a bit too sharp there. Slammed the runway pretty hard. This was the XR2. I would not have uh, would not have made that. That was definitely a crash. Otherwise, not too bad. Lined up the center of the runway. Obviously made it to the base. Only uh, major problem there was just leaving that air brake extended um, while landing. It just brought me down too hard and <clears throat> slammed into the runway. But that's how the Delta Glider, the standard Delta Glider, is brought back from orbit. At least that's one method. Okay, in this video, I'm going to land the standard Delta Glider, and I've created a scenario. This is actually pretty old, about a year ago, and it just has the Delta Glider in orbit shortly after taking off from Cape Canaveral, and I'll explain here when it loads up. So in this scenario, you can see that I've got a circular orbit around 237 kilometers. And at the moment I am about halfway around. This is the point that I saved it. It's not quite halfway around and I did that on purpose. That would give me a little bit more time. So let me select Cape Canaveral. So I'm 15, uh, 15 point seven eight, and you know, counting up, getting close to the halfway point. It reaches the halfway point when you're around 18.5 to 19.5, somewhere in that range. And that's when I will do the retrograde maneuver, and then burn down the periapsis. So. This takes a little while just due to the fact that you can't really do a lot of time acceleration when you're when you're landing when you're coming through the atmosphere the and this burn is quite small it doesn't take much at all to get your periapsis down and to do this uh, the usual target that you're going for is about 40 kilometers so we'll go ahead and do that use a little bit of translation to get the rest of it. And it doesn't have to be exact, but I like nice round numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and get it exactly at 40.00. I'll go out to 100x until I get to the halfway point. And I know I'm getting close. Let me go down to 10. And the, the easy way to know that you've reached the halfway point is this number will stop going up and it'll start going down. So I'm at 19.85 and I think, because I've done this scenario a couple times, I think that's the point where it actually starts counting backwards. 
but that's basically what I look for is just when the distance yeah it's counting backwards now so now I know I'm halfway around the globe so I'll go ahead and hit retrograde and I'll use T just to speed that up it's it's so sensitive it's such a delicate process that any amount of uh, time acceleration just kind of really messes things up but at least for now we're up in orbit and we can take care of some some of these maneuvers with time acceleration so I'll just kind of walk through the basic process at least this is kind of how I do it using the standard delta glider and in my opinion the standard delta glider it just is a really it's a really bad vessel for re-entry just that whole process the deorbit re-entry landing this is just not a good vessel for it because it just doesn't have the autopilots that you need but it's it's possible so I'm just going to accelerate time here